Uh, this is Stuart O'Connor for Tech Digest. I'm here chatting with Polaroid CEO Scott Hardy, who's, who's visiting London. Good to Hi. be here. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Polaroid, but first let's quickly talk about a couple of new products Polaroid has just launched in the past uh, month or so. First off, you've got a new camera called the Cube. We do. We have a Polaroid Cube product, and what it is is it's a it's a 79 pound um, lifestyle action sports camera. And what it's done is it's, it's a 35 millimeter square. Um, it has a rubberized housing around it with, with a, many different mounting options and accessories that go with it. But it's really allowed, the idea is to grow the overall action sports market, not just cater to the male dominated extreme sports uh, market, but really have something that, um, that the female market, the younger uh, youth market, and even the older demographic can have a product that's really easy to use that's fun, that's accessible, and, um, and that takes great quality, you know, video and photos. Yeah, but you saw, I mean, it's extreme sports, but it would also uh, make a pretty decent webcam, or you could use it for, uh, for mounting on a helmet to, to, yeah. shoot, to shoot video. Yeah, you could. you could. So it has a helmet mount, it has a tripod mount, it has a bicycle mount, a strap mount, a suction cup mount, and then the bumper case is a lanyard where it actually is this rubberized case that goes around the device and you can just wear it around your neck and take photos that way. Um, and then the, the fun mount is the monkey mount. So you can just literally put it on the head of a monkey, this little monkey stand, and just set it on your desk and hit record. What I think people have found most uh, exciting about it though is the fact that the camera has a built-in magnet. Because of the magnet you can attach it to uh, any metal object, even the hood of your car, the side of your bike, uh, we've seen it mounted to all sorts of crazy things, um, and and that just adds this whole new level of of fun to it. I've even seen you know my my kids stick it to the refrigerator and hit record and walk away. <laughs> and how I mean, what, how long can you record a video? Uh, the record the videos record for about ninety minutes, which is pretty standard That's for not most. Bad. Yeah, yeah, most cameras are about that. Yeah, and of course, I mean Polaroid is you know very well known for cameras. It's been in cameras all its life. But I understand you just relaunched a tablet as well. We did. We, of we just launched a tablet at, uh, at Asda stores, two tablets, a 7.8 inch tablet and a 10 inch tablet. And, um, you know, these tablets are designed, um, uh, you know, from the best technologies. Um, they're very well built and constructed. Um, and, you know, to Polaroid, our brand is about sharing. And, and tablets are really a lean back experience where, Many times you're, you're enjoying your, your video content, your photos, your images, and then these tablets have great cameras built into them mm. where you can actually take photographs, you can, you, can, um, you, know, you can share family moments and experiences with your family using uh, the video camera features um, you know, where you're streaming back to each other through Skype or some service like that. Um, and, there to, and once again, the Polaroid brand DNA has always stood for affordability. And, uh, you know, the 7.8-inch tablet has a retail price of 79 pounds. The 10-inch, I think, is 99 pounds. And, and, you know, that's why I think on Black Friday in the first two hours we sold 10,000 units at Asda stores. Yeah. And they're Android tablets? They're Android tablets, yeah. We have a partnership with Google directly. And, um, and you know, we're very much um, supportive and strategically aligned with Google in terms of Android-based devices. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing with the way technology is moving these days, you know, people have always associated Polaroid with the instant cameras of old. You know, is it challenging Polaroid as a brand to say, hey, we do other stuff as well? And I mean, you know, you are mm -hmm. having to branch out. And yeah, right. No, it's it's a good question. We are. Um, you got to look at the heritage of Polaroid. Polaroid was originally started as a company that made polarized lenses. Mm. So Edwin Land, the founder of Polaroid in 1938, when he founded the company, it was really to manufacture and sell polarized lenses and those polarized lenses were what went into the the fighter pilot fighter pilot goggles that won World War II. Um, you know they wore these because it eliminated glare that polarization um, that when you buy a polarized sunglass today is the same technology that's why Polaroid polarized um, the same name it, it was invented by Polaroid um, the patents have long expired you know and now it's something that's in the public domain that ma sunglass manufacturers can use but because we have this heritage in anything that's visual, our brand has this ability to extend into adjacent categories that share some common attributes. Even take, for example, a flat screen television. Every flat screen TV and LCD panel, whether it's the one in your smartphone, your tablet, or your TV, has a polarized 
um, uh, uh, a polarizer uh, filter on it. And that's, once again, technology born inside of Polaroid long ago. And so we have this ability that our, for our brand to extend out into categories that are very visual. And then when you integrate things like ease of use, um, affordability, then it just hits on you know, the key elements of our brand's DNA. Mm. So um, where does Polaroid fit into the wearables market? You know, it, it's, it's a fairly new market, mm -hmm. but it's, and it, it's, the, it's the one tech market that everybody's talking about and everyone's wondering what is going to come next. Yeah. I mean, you, you've said with the, with the Cube camera, you can actually wear it as a lens now around your neck. Right. Are you moving into, would you be looking at maybe doing a, a smart watch? Yeah type device in the future? We are, yeah. We are looking at the wearables market in a bigger way. Um, you know, people are definitely interested in monitoring their health mm -hmm. and, and whether it's, you know, how many steps they're walking, what's their sleep pattern. Um, and then also this integration and extension of your smartphone's features into devices that you can wear. Mm -hmm. We think that that trend is critical and key and, um, and we are, you know, definitely exploring how do we get into the wearables market in a bigger way with devices that you actually could wear on your person that are extensions of your smartphone. Uh, and what do, what do you think is the next evolution for cameras and consumer devices? You know, I think that connectivity and shareability will continue to be a, a key trend um, because of the fact that people are using their smartphones as their primary go-to camera um, for daily photographs on the go. I think there's, there's an expectation that any of your cameras should be connected, uh, whether it's through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, NFC, or maybe even connect paired to your smartphone. We believe that, that that connectivity is key. The other thing we see, though, with cameras is it's really segmenting dramatically, where it's no longer about your traditional point and shoot. It's really about a camera that fits what, the situation I need to use it for. One of the top selling cameras we sell in the UK um, is a camera we actually sell at Argos and it's a, it's a waterproof, uh, ruggedized camera. It has a selfie screen on the front so you can take selfies at the beach, um, but you can also go you know, scuba diving or snorkeling with it um, and you know, drop it in the sand and not worry about ruining it. It's designed for that situational use. The other cameras we sell would be like our Z2300 instant digital camera or our PIC 300 instant camera, mm. where people are at a party, a wedding, they want to be able to take photographs in the moment and actually share them and print them. Um, so we see cameras continue to segment into these based on situational usage models as opposed to one camera solves all things. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about sort of printing out photos. I mean, we've been told for years and years that, you know, that the paperless office is coming and yeah. it's still not here yet. Do you think it will ever get to the stage where people no longer want to print anything out? I don't think so. I, I, think, I think the paradigm shift has been it's no longer about wanting to print your four by six photos of the film that you, you know, went and took. And you, you remember you used to go to the film developer and they'd print all the pictures you took. Mm. Now it's about what are those shots that really means something to you because there's now billions of photos being taken every day and we talk to people often around you know show me on your smartphone your favorite photograph and they bring it up and it's usually has to do with a family member maybe it's a son or a daughter or maybe it's a family picture maybe it's a, of a parent a grandparent a friend and you ask them what have you done with that photo and there's this almost look of remorse on their face because they haven't done anything with it and so in the United States, we recently launched a new retail, experiential retail concept called the Polaroid Photo Bar, where people can now go in and they can take that one photograph. They can print a little small Polaroid 3x4 classic white border print, and we sell, it's really about a product, not a print, but they can, and because you can buy a frame that goes with it, you can print six uh, photographs and then buy a, a frame that holds all six photographs. Um, and then you can even turn it into a work of art and have it mounted to bamboo, metal, um, you know, all sorts of different substrates um, that, that people could then hang on their wall, put on their shelf, put on their desk. And so we think that it's really about a productization as opposed to a printing paradigm mm. where you're wanting to take something that has that huge sentimental value and then actually display it as opposed to keep it trapped on your smartphone or on your you know, computer in the cloud somewhere. Where anybody could get to it, as we learned. Exactly, and then how do you find it? How do you find it? <laughs> or, or you get people that uh, hack into it and oh, that, yeah, photos sure. you don't want. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So to us it's about finding the photos that really matter and then turning them into products. 
And what trends in technology do you think we should be watching? I think that you've got to keep an eye. We talked about wearable technology. Mm -hmm. That's a huge trend. I think that the 4K Ultra HD trend is very real and is happening and we'll, we'll start to transition in a much bigger way starting in 2015 um, and, you know, and expect Polaroid to be you know, helping lead the way there. Um, you know, at, in the UK specifically at Asda stores and then also we'll, we'll be launching devices that capture 4K. But 4K Ultra HD, it's four times the resolution of traditional HD and we're going to be selling um, you know, uh, flat screen televisions at very affordable price points that display the 4K resolution. Um, as well as, and by the way, you don't, you don't need 4K content to get the benefit. Even taking 1080p content and up-converting it to 4K through the TV's processor looks fantastic. And to me, it's, it's a, it's a future-proofing reason to upgrade. Yeah. Um, so that's a big trend, too, we see. Uh, well, how soon do you think till we get to 8K and then 16 uh, <laughs> You know, I, mean, I don't... How, how far can it beyond go? Beyond 4K, <laughs> right now I'm focused on 4K, and to me it's about how do we get um, 4K... Um, how do we make it ubiquitous in terms of pricing and availability so that whenever you're buying your next TV, it's just a no-brainer that you would buy the 4K, that there's no hesitation because the pricing is affordable and um, the content is coming in available. And then on cameras too, on video cameras that you would capture in 4K um, and that that becomes the new standard of the future because it really is radically that much better in terms of the, if you've seen it. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit like a leap from DVD to Blu-ray. It really but is. But some people haven't quite got on the Blu-ray bandwagon. Yet, <laughs> true. Which surprises me. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. What about 3D? Is Polaroid looking at uh, doing anything with 3D? You know, you know, Polaroid, it's, it's funny you ask that. We were at the World State Fair back in the 50s. We were the provider of the 3D glasses. The polarized. The polarized 3D, 3D glasses, yeah. glasses that people wore. And so we have a deep heritage in 3D, but... You know, there was attempts to have 3D become a bigger implementation in the home, um, but it really was one of those trends that never seemed to take off. And I think people just don't want to wear, they don't want to have to wear devices on their face to watch TV at home. Um, so that didn't take off well, and, and so we're probably less focused on 3D as a technology. Yeah, although we are moving to a, to a time where you'll have uh, 3D TVs without glasses. Yeah, sure. Maybe when, when that comes, that could, that could be interesting. And, you know, the one thing in 3D that I think we do have our eye on is 3D printing. Mm. I think 3D printing will become an interesting technology um, that's more and more relevant as the price point comes down. Yeah, and I was, I was interested to know if you'd be looking into 3D, you know, producing 3D cameras. Do you think there'd be a home market for... Uh, there could taking, be. You know, taking snapshots in 3D. Taking snapshots in 3D. You know, I think maybe it'll be tied to the printing, you know. As 3D printing becomes more ubiquitous, um, being able to actually, you know, photograph something and then print something in 3D, mm. you know, actually print a physical object that you took a picture of, that could be an interesting usage model. Yeah, do you can see that happening one day? I, I think anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Great, thank you.